11b, again, uh, this number 11 on the test is either going to be a tangent or a cotangent graph. Now, no matter if it's tangent or cotangent, period is always going to be the same. It's pi over b is the formula. The b in this case is 3. So it's going to be pi over 3. That is your period. For the phase shift, for this problem, it's c over b. Because there's no tangent here, because it's a cotangent, it's just c over b. If it was a tangent, we'd have a minus sign on the end, and we'd have this extra stuff we'd have to do there on that one. But this is just c over b only because it's a cotangent graph. Now, there's a plus sign that's here, so that means our c value is actually going to be negative, because remember, we can write that as minus a minus. We can do 3x minus a negative pi over 4, so uh, our c is negative. So negative pi over 4, we're dividing it by the b which is 3. If you flip and multiply this, you get negative pi over 12 as your phase shift. Next, we have to figure out what the half point is. Okay, so half point is going to be, if the formula for it is period divided by 2. That's the, that's the formula for it. Okay, so the period we found was pi over 3, so we have pi over 3, we're dividing it by 2, and so we get pi over 6 as your half point. So our PS, the phase shift, was negative pi over 12, and then we have half point. Now, these two should have the same denominator, so if your phase shift and half point do not have the same denominator, it's always best to get common denominators first to make it easier later when we add to find the other key points. So I'm going to add, or I'll put a 2 over 2 here on that, multiply it by 2 over 2, and get 2 pi over 12. And so now this one is going to match the denominator of the phase shift. It's going to make everything easier to add when we do that. So we'll start with the phase shift. That's your first key point. And we're just going to keep adding 2 pi over 12 to it until we get all of them complete. We'll do that up here. So for the to find the second key point, because that's the first one, we get negative pi over 12 plus 2 pi over 12, and we get positive pi over 12. So that's going to be your second key point. And now we're just going to keep adding 2 pi over 12 to get the other ones. Okay, so next we're going to do pi over 12 plus 2 pi over 12 is 3 pi over 12. 3 pi over 12 plus 2 pi over 12 is 5 pi over 12, and then 5 pi over 12 plus 2 pi over 12 is 7 pi over 12. All right, so now these are going to be all your other key points that we have. We're going to put them down now on the, the graph. Negative pi over 12 is here, and then we're going to just put the other, other ones on here. Positive pi over 12, 3 pi over 12, 5 pi over 12, and 7 pi over 12. Because we have all those. We have the first one, the middle one, and the last one are the ones that get the vertical asymptotes. We also have our y-axis is going to go right between those, between the negative and the positive. Now for the actual points that this is going to go through, there's a 1 in front, so we're going to put 1 and negative 1 down there so we can get our points that this will go through. Now, cotangent graph, there's no negative in front, so this is going to fall as you go from left to right. So actually right here, that's the halfway point between negative pi over 12 and pi over 12, so the graph will cross through at 1 right there, and it's going to go through negative 1 down below, so the first one is going to look like this, that would be one period of that one. Again, whatever number you have in front, that's where you're going to plot on here. So if that was different, if it was like a 2 or something else, we'd have it going through here at, at 2, but in this case we have 1 and negative 1 right there. But of course this could be any, if, it's, if there's a 2 in front, then it'd be a 2 here. That would be the points that you would plot in that case. Okay. This next one, halfway point, we're going to put a, a 1 right there, halfway point between here we're going to put a 1 down there. Again, you do not have to label the halfway points on these graphs. It's sufficient just to show 
these points only. You only have to show the asymptotes and the x-axis. Those are the only points that you have to label. Okay. Otherwise, uh, you don't have to show the halfway points. You can just go ahead and plot it on your graph and just kind of draw it in like I did here. Just going to put the halfway point and label one negative one like that. That's sufficient. This one will go through like that. So let me make this look a little bit better. It's going to go through here. There we go. And so that's going to be drawn uh, with, that's two periods. So again, on the test, it will ask you to draw two full periods. So as long as you follow the correct formulas for phase shift and your period, it's automatically set up that way. If you, if you find a total of five key points automatically, that will be uh, two, two full periods as you can see here.